Coming up, she's known as Mighty Ruthie, the queen of the court in Northern California. Ruthie Bolton, the two-time Olympic gold medalist and former WNBA star player with the Sacramento Monarchs, opens up about the biggest battle in her life, surviving domestic violence. Ruthie on the road to glory, next. And now, Rob on the road, exploring Northern California. And joining us now on Rob at Home is Ruthie Bolton. Ruthie, it is so good to see you. You too, I love your big smile, it gives me energy. Oh, I love yours. It's so great to see you. Yes. What a list of accolades we just went through uh, wow. on your career. Wow. Well, you know what? Yeah, that, I, I got a few. Just a few. When I go and speak and they read my accolades out, it's boring to me because I'm, I'm excited about why I'm there. And, and, and accolades have just been a platform. So I'm not really a big accolades person, but I know they have to sort of say it. But I want people to know the story behind the accolades. What is that story, Ruthie? Because I know that it involves quite a different battle than you faced on the court. Definitely, it's, it's, um, I want people to know, I like to be transparent. I want people to know really the real Ruthie. You know, I know a lot of athletes and a lot of people want to sort of be, create a distance and they want to sort of have their life separate. You know, they want to sort of be, I would say, create this wall, it's sort of a private, but I want people to know where I've been. I want them to know where I'm at, where I'm going. And I feel like it's part of my ministry, it's part of who I am. And all the things I've done in basketball had just been a platform to set me up for so many other things. And I just want people to know, yeah, even in spite of what I've accomplished, I've had pain, I've had moments of doubt, but the most important thing um, is that I've had the ability and the, and the faith has been my foundation which has allowed me to rise above. and. And I know we may talk about this a little bit later, but I, you know, during my career, I was, I experienced domestic violence, unfortunately, but you know, you know, my last book from pain to power talks about how I can turn my pain to power. So that's what I want people to get from my story. You know, after we're done, you know, this next 30, 40 minutes, if people think about me a week from now, two weeks from now, if all they can remember is that I played basketball and you know what, we've done a bad job with this segment. I completely agree because They'll forget, and this is a famous quote, but they'll forget what we say, but they won't forget how you make them feel. Yeah. And all of that is through relating with life experience. Yes, indeed. Um, I think it is so important to use this platform, and PBS is, is for the public. Yes. And I think that it is important to use this platform as a conduit to reach the person watching. Mm -hmm. From your mouth to the person watching, talk to me about your struggles and the strength you found to get through them. Wow, my struggles. I have to go back to McLean, Mississippi, where I grew up from a very small family of 20, 12 girls and eight, <laughs> 20. Boys, 12 girls and eight boys, and I am the 16th wow. 16 of 20. And I'm so thankful that uh, that my mom that they didn't stop at 15 because uh. I would I would have been left out. So I'm a 16 child, and you know my father really gave. He he was a very he was a disciplinary. Uh, my dad was a preacher. I'm a PK kid, mm -hmm. and my dad had values. He taught principles, and he said this. He said, "If you take in life with you just a few principles, you won't have to carry a suitcase full of rules. If you take just a few principles, you don't have to carry a suitcase full of rules." And old principles are faith, attitude, which is mindset, and character and hard work. Those, those three things, it doesn't matter your economical status, it doesn't matter whether you're skilled and talented in sports, it doesn't matter. Those three things should embody who you are, and you're going to need them as you go through this life. And he would say that all the time, and boy, have I needed them faith, you know, attitude, mindset, and, uh, and how hard I work, which is my character, and, and uh, which has those things have been the, the thread, the glue of my life and have been the foundation. You know, as a little girl, about 14 years old, 15 years old, and I was a serious tomboy, just rough hair, just rough edges. I'm like, I, I would just, I wanted to play with my brother to jump fences. I wanted to climb trees. Even if I had a dress on, I hated wearing dresses. I wanted to play football. I wanted the tough stuff. We used to jump fences, and I was pretty good at it. This one particular day, Rob, one particular day, as I got ready to jump this fence, and we was all a group. And 
And as I got to the fence, it seemed like it got higher. I'm like, what is going on? I can't jump. And fear set in. All of a sudden, fear. I was, I was afraid. And so I took a deep breath and took a step back. And I said, I got this. And I proceeded to try to jump it again. And it seemed like it got taller and taller. And I could look beyond and see my family, cousins and brothers and sisters leaving me. And they were motioning like, come on, don't worry about it. We know you've jumped it before. And I'm like, no, I got this. I got this one more time. So as I tried again, I got ready to go. And all I could see was that fence. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, just relax, shake it off. So I pondered with that fence for about 15 minutes. And back in the South, if the street light came on, you had to be in the house within five minutes. I don't know why, but it was like, I did not, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go inside. And uh, my siblings convinced me, now you better come inside. And so I remember sitting inside at night, like all I could think about was that fence. I sat before my red beans and rice and my, and my chicken and my, I just could not eat. I wanted to jump that fence. And they couldn't even understand, like, what's the big deal? We know you've jumped it before. It's just bypass. We'll say you jumped it. And that wasn't good enough for me, Rob. That wasn't good enough. So the next morning, I get up, nobody. I'm like, Ruthie, you got this. Just relax. Go back to the basics. And as I got ready, I said, I got this. I just took a deep breath and I, I just started seeing myself jumping over it. I started seeing myself celebrate. So as I proceeded toward the fence, I leaped and landed. I leaped, jumped, and I landed, not quite on my feet, but I landed, Rob. Oh my God, I was so excited. I celebrated that moment on, like literally on the ground. There was ESPN wasn't there. The Hall of Fame committee wasn't there. The Olympic committee wasn't there. There was no cameras there. It was just me and that fence. So Ruthie was there. I was there. Yeah, I was there. And I was like, oh my God, I did it. I celebrated like it was the gold medal game. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of gold medal, I believe that's the day, Rob, that I started embracing who I eventually became, the Olympian, the Hall of Famer, a world champion. And because I started seeing beyond my obstacles. And when I share that story, Rob, I, I share with people like, what is your why? Your why might not make sense to anybody. But guess what? You lose your why, you lose your way, you lose your purpose, mm. you lose your strength and your direction. You're on a slippery slope. So but as long as you stick to that why, and I just, it didn't make sense. My family said, what are you doing? There's no, there was no peer pressure. Matter of fact, they were telling me, don't worry about it. There was something inside of me that really was just pushing for me. This is your moment. You've got to do it. This moment would change your life. And I jumped that fence and that moment really, really did change my life. And so once I moved to a lot of times we, we have something, we, we, uh, the obstacle, we focus too much on the obstacle. But whatever you're going through, if you see beyond the obstacle, you see on the other side of this pandemic is, is, is success. On the other side of fear is faith. You know, on the other side of sadness is, is, is greatness. You know, so I, I encourage everyone that's listening, embrace your greatness. In spite of the fears, it's okay to, feel, to, fear, to have fear at times. Because guess what? If we're never afraid, we don't need courage. But on the other side of fear is being courageous. And, and, and I really, that moment changed my life forever. And I didn't know that that was the moment that, that inside of me birthed that Olympian, that drive, that it, that just like refused to say no. And so that's the story that embodies who I eventually became. And when I share that story, people are like, oh my God, it, it, people, it resonates with people because it, it's so realistic and it's like, but it's a moment that seems so simple. And so I, with this, I want to say, find your miracle in every day. Never miss out on the opportunity to grow to become the best version of you. That's all anybody could ever ask. How do I become the best version of myself? And jumping that fence was a start for me. I love where you took that story because you just said, don't miss the miracles in these moments. Well, that can happen for someone today. Yes. I, am, I don't think that it's ever too late mm -hmm. to find your fence. Yes. Jump it. Whether it's in your brain, physically, just mentally, yes. uh, emotionally, find your fence and jump it. Yes. And that can start today, tomorrow, whenever. Yes. But if we focus on yesterday, we're looking at the fence. Exactly, the fence. And, and it's so easy to get caught up in, you know, the things can camouflage what's really there. Things can camouflage us and distract us and make us feel, make us die ourselves, make us feel inadequate, make us feel like we're, we're lesser than. But I encourage you and I give you and I give you permission. I give you permission to rise above and to strive because I grasp who I really am and who I who I've become. And 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 I almost still a work in progress, but it's okay because I I want to be able to make just a big of an impact off the court that I did on, on the basketball court. But at the moment you feel 
that you're the weakest, that's your strongest. Because guess what? At your weakest, your breakthrough is so close. When you feel like quitting, your breakthrough is right there. And so at that moment, when you're going through challenges and all, and people telling you to quit, people saying, no, are you, are you telling your own self? Is it, you know, I'm, I'm fatigued, I can't do it. I'm telling you, if you just push through and break through, no matter how much people are tearing you down, hey, let use that as a stepping stone to raise the roof and rise above. I love that. I love that, Ruthie. And I also, I know what it's like to go through chapters in life where when we go home, we're masking a lot. Um, and you went through that battle in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. Okay. Talk to me about surviving and getting out and through domestic violence. Wow, I tell you, Rob, when I first started talking about this about three years ago, it was so hard to even articulate the words. I could not say five words without getting emotional. You know, I felt like this was something that I slept, I swept up on the rug. I just let it go. I said, it's the past. I'm good. I'm strong. But it was such a tough place because, Rob, you, you, you heard my story. I'm not a quitter. I know. You know, out of every phase of my life, I would have been forced to prove myself. I've been forced to rise above and say, you know what, you, you say no, but I'm going to say yes, because I want this. And at every phase of my life, from college to playing for the national team, to having to pay for my own way to trials, uh, from after the national team, I want you know, I wanted to play overseas. That's how I was not too sure. All the different places I've had to prove myself. So when I get in, in this marriage where I felt like and more people said walk away, the more I want to stay. More yeah. people say it's not going to work, the more I want to make it work. I will go to counseling on my own, and he would say, well, you, you, know, you probably need to leave him, show tough love. I'm like, I'm paying you money not to tell me to, uh, to leave him. I'm paying you to tell me how to fix him. I'm not a quitter. It is not in my DNA. I don't know how to walk away. I don't know what it means to give up. That's not in me. And so I fought. And I didn't know if victory was staying or leaving. And I didn't care. I went through the pain, the suffering, but I, I said, Lord, if this is where victory is, I'll stay here. I'm willing to endure. And so I, I stayed. I went to counseling and and we um, we tried to renew our vows after the Olympics. And I ended up renewing my vows with a black eye. Hmm. Uh, you know, you don't see my complex. You know how hard it is for me to really get a black eye. I'm like, it was, it was just a thing where it was so tough. I, I would play basketball, go out there and do amazing work, go out there as a guard and score 25 points, have 10 rebounds as a guard and do amazing things. Because you know what? I felt accepted. I felt like I was part of something. I felt validated. But I would go home and I would feel this small. And I would say, well, Lord, I wasn't from the basketball court, though. No. No, it, it wasn't. It was just going what going home and not being able to live up to, I guess, being a wife and disappointing. Like, I didn't like to, I felt like, Lord, what is wrong, wrong with no, me? No, 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 no. I'm going to stop you. You're not the problem. <laughs> you are a victim of domestic violence. Yeah. Can you even receive that today? Yeah, I am. I after years of I, where the last I really didn't receive this until the last three years. I felt like it would just walk away. I would just walk away, and it would just go away. But I felt like it was my fault. I felt like a failure. I felt like, man, you know, Lord, Lord, why do you bless me with medals and world championship, and I was such a bad wife? Like I couldn't even make you know, you know, my husband happy. He was always mad and upset with me. And I just, I was like, man, I, I felt just like so, I stood before the trash can, Rob, with my Olympic, my medals from uh, Australia in 2000. And I, I wanted to just throw them in the trash. Ooh. I said, I, I do not deserve this. I did. I looked at him like this. I said, I don't deserve this. And, and he told me the same thing. You, you play and you do that. You don't deserve it because you, uh, you're just not a you know, good wife. He's never happy. Have, have, you, have you walked away? Have you been able? to walk away from those thoughts completely. Yes, I have. I, I have been able to walk away now. I'm, I'm thriving and I'm soaring. And when I look back, when I share the story, I can't believe how, how little I knew and how I was putting myself and how much, so much I went through just dealing with taking care of that weight. That's why I'm like, how was I able to play? And some young kid asked me, and it had never been asked before. They said, do you think you played as hard as you did maybe because you went through domestic violence? 
I said, mm -hmm. you know what? Probably. That was because at home, I could not control that place. But on the basketball court, I'm like, I wanted my teammates to cheer for me. I didn't want to let them down. I wanted to, them to love me. I want them to celebrate me because I wasn't, wasn't getting celebrated at home. So that's what made me fight. The coach tell me, go out there and defend someone that averaged 30 points and three. Oh, yeah, I got you, coach. So coach going to tell me, hey, I need you to rebound as a guard. I, I rebound at least a Leslie. Every possession counted. I wanted every moment that I wanted somebody to say, great job, Ruthie, because I was looking for validation. We all want to be validated. We don't like to disappoint. We don't want to fail. And I felt like, man, how can I, I feel like I was failing at my marriage and I want to succeed at something. But I am going to reiterate this, that your abuser does not get any credit for your strength on the court. Yes. Your victories. Yes. Get the credit for your victory. strength. Yes. And yeah. And, and I, go ahead. I do want to know, because when I hear you talk about that chapter, you said at the top of this show, you want to make sure that people know the real Ruthie. And I want to make sure that you do too. Mm -hmm. You do know that you had nothing to do with that abuse, correct? Yes. I know. I know now. And that's what I share. I knew, but it was, it took me, this has been years. It's been over 15 years that this happened and until I start, you know, once I agreed to, uh, I, I only went to really serious counseling. I uh, threw this workshop in the last three years is when I realized that it wasn't my fault. But I felt like all the time that I was a failure. But now I realize that it's not. And I'm thankful that God spared me. And I'm thankful that I, I don't have any unforgiveness in my heart, that I have forgiven him. I've forgiven myself. And I feel like now I'm in a place where I can help other women be a voice. And I've gone spoken at prison robs. I've spoken at... Uh, Women I've workshops. I've been in New Zealand, Samoa, Bangladesh, Papua New Guinea, doing workshop with women that just reverence me, just like, oh my God, this happened to you, and you seem so strong, and you seem so confident, and you seem so mighty. But I said, guess what? I haven't always been mighty. I've been where you are. So when I'm having a conversation with you, I'm talking to you. We're having a conversation. I'm, I'm wrapping my arms around you and embracing you, saying we are in this together. I love you. And that we can soar together, we can thrive together. And guess what? I, Rob, I don't know if you know this me, but Maverick. I went to a, a conference to speak, and that now my new name is a Maverick, a woman that makes her way. Like when it looks up to my, even in your pain, even in your misery, misery, you cry and no tear, but you still walk and you still thrive and you still in victory. So when I share the story, and if I get emotional, I always say, Hey, don't feel sorry for me. I'm not speaking as a victim anymore. I'm speaking victoriously. Because I have roles above that place. You know, you talk about how you want people to know that you put your arms around them. And in this day and age, when right now we can't even do that with COVID. Yeah, I know. A longing, or people are starting to fray mm -hmm. with everything that we're seeing in this country that is so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And there's such a need to be hugged and held right yeah. now. What would you say to yourself? that you know now. What would you say to the abused Ruthie? Well, what I would say to the abused Ruthie is that it's not your fault. Please forgive yourself. Please let it go. It's not your fault. You are wonderfully made. You are awesome. Uh, you've been, you are here for a reason and that is bigger than basketball and, and you are very courageous and, um, and, and, and love who you are. People love you, people elevate you, people celebrate with you and say it's okay. In spite of your mistakes, in spite of your small mistake, you don't deserve, you never deserve, not one hit from, from him and that that's, he is not to be your vindicator. And I want you to know that you're loved and that you are, uh, there's no one in the world have your set of fingerprints and that God designed you that way for a reason. So go in peace. Uh, smile and know that, that you are worthy in that to the world. You might be one person, but to one person, you can be the world. That is so beautiful, Ruthie. If that is the, if that is the takeaway from today, and you just gave me chill bumps. I mean, if that is the takeaway today, then that is a success. Yes. Because that's the real Ruthie, the inspirer the um, the gold medal 
winner. And I'm not just talking about the kind around your neck. Yes. I'm talking about running the race um, as the person that you are. And I admire you for that. I feel like when you share your scars, you reveal the brightest spot of your soul mm -hmm. um, because you've let someone in. And when they get in, they feel like they can get out of whatever they're in. What would you say to someone right now who's watching, who just heard you speak to your old self? Not your old self, but your old <laughs> days. And what would you say to someone now to encourage them to take those same steps out? Yes, I want you to know that in spite of your mistakes, in spite of what you've done, you do not deserve whatever. And I know what you're thinking. I know I've been there, that victim mentality. You feel like, what did I do? I know what you're going through, but I want you to know that you got somebody here care for you. Uh, I want you to know that this is it's not your fault, that you are wonderfully made and that you are mighty and that you are a maverick and that you are strong. And I want you to believe that. And I want you to take your power back. Take your power back. If I stand up, when you look in the mirror, when you see that person, you see that person in the mirror, I want you to love her in spite of what it looks like. I want you to love that person because you are unique and there's no one else like you. And that all those labels that have been put on you, I give you permission now to take them off. That I'm dumb, I'm stupid, I'm not good enough. I'm ugly, I'm fat. I want you to take those off because you are mighty. I give you permission to be mighty. And I want you to, while you look in the mirror, I want you to flex right here. I want you to flex. And it's not a physical thing, it's a mental thing. I'm flexing up on this. Hey, you know what? You might, and then you know what? Say, so you might well move up my way because I'm flexing, I'm strong, I'm coming strong. And, and I want you to know I'm in your corner. I celebrate with you. I love you. I am your friend. And I'll add to that when you do that flex, don't feel badly if you don't have that muscle that Ruthie just had. Yeah. Because I don't have that muscle, and most <laughs> of us don't either. I'll also say, that if you're hearing this, then you still have the ability to get out. Yes. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes, and please don't go through this alone. You know, have someone you trust. I know that, I knew my family loved me when I was going through it, and uh, but some of them I wouldn't talk to because they were always, you know, talking about him and how bad he is, and as a victim, sometimes you're gonna always protect that person. It just, you're gonna protect, okay, how bad he is. So I, I want you to know that you find somebody to talk to, find someone that, that you can be open to, that's someone that you can connect with. There's a, a matter of fact, uh, you can call the national hotline. You never have to tell them your name or uh, where you're from. You just share your story. They get almost 4,000 calls a day. Call them if, you don't, if you're still embarrassed and you want anybody to know or talk to someone about it because it is a tough, it is a horrible journey to go by yourself. And I, you know what, and the thing about it is that I, I encourage you to journal. Write down your thoughts, your emotions. It is so therapeutic. I wrote about 20, 20 journals during that time. And then now my book, From Pain to Power, talks about how I was able to turn my pain to power. And how I was able to do that is thought, there's something you do well. Mine was basketball. Then I was seeing a little bit. And, um, and then I would, uh, you know, I love exercising. So I would do those things that made me feel powerful. And there were times when he made me feel this small. I would go to the gym and I'm like, girls can't, I could do 10, I could do 10, 15 pull-ups. I can do 75 push-ups. I start feeling strong. So even if you can't do that, go back to what have value you, whether you dance or whether you write or whether you sew or whether you do art, do something where you, your gifts, focus on what you do well and not let that person take your power saying you, you don't amount to anything because that, that, that is not true. And I, that is not true. And I want you to believe that that is not true. You are better than that. You are stronger. You are mighty, mightier than you ever, you ever imagined. There's something inside of you, as I was trying to jump over that fence, there's something inside of you that is, that is mighty and tough and strong. And this is a moment, I hope that you can take your power back. If you think about me a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now, I want you to know that this is not a basketball story. This is a life story. It's a story of power, of uh, positive empowerment, a positive attitude, faith, and, uh, and, a, and a story of just a rising above. I want to empower. I just feel like there's more for me to do. So the gold medals, the Hall of Fame trophy is not enough. There's more for me to do. So with that, I'm going to say, Amazing.
Jesus in grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I found was blind. But now I see. I love you. I love you too, Ruthie, and I see you Thank too. You. Thank you.